All right, kitty cats. Uh, for our, our Lions of Liberty Pride, for our patrons anyway, it is a Tuesday night. I've got a bottle of wine here, and I wanted to take a little bit of a break from the serious, a little bit of a break from the libertarian theory, the policy talk, the candidates, what, what have you, all the standard stuff. And I wanted to do a little something. I wanted to bring Twitter to life, so to speak, because... I think really at this point, my favorite part of being a libertarian is spending time on libertarian Twitter and uh, enjoying many of my favorite Twitter followers or not followers, but follows, whatever. And uh, I brought a few of them here tonight to join me and have some fun. So first, I cannot have <laughs> I'm just I'm just seeing your caption, Pete, uh, <laughs> your your title that you change it to. Of course, uh, you cannot have a show with the best of libertarian Twitter without the king of libertarian Twitter. Uh, he is the author of some books, uh, Freedom to Meme Them, uh, Kids Aren't All Right, I believe it's called. Uh, what else, Pete? What do you do? Libertarian Institute, Free Man Beyond the Wall, all those things, and Master Master uh, Inflamer on Twitter he is, of course, Pete Quinones. Pete, are you ready to roar? What's going on, Mark? How you doing, man? Uh, you need to answer the question, sir. Are you ready to roar? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, man, this man's excited, folks. You're not going to be able to contain him tonight. Uh, another one. Another one of my favorite Twitter follow, and these are all for different reasons that I like following these accounts because you guys all have some different styles. Uh, but if you want someone who will never, never give up on an argument and will never, <laughs> ever concede defeat, you got to be following my man Ace, Ace Arcus. Ace, what's up, buddy? Hey, are you ready to roar? I, I, to I am ready to roar. Me off so much. I am ready to roar. Thank you so much for inviting me on here. <laughs> awesome to have you. And lastly, uh, this this gentleman in quotes. Uh, Truly, I will say there's hardly a day that I open Twitter and see a tweet from this count and don't nearly piss my pants. Uh, <laughs> I'm really thrilled to have on, <laughs> depending on, on what what you want to call him. He may be called Neo Connor Mover. Uh, for the purposes of this video show, he's called Pete Q Anandis. Uh, <laughs> Neo Connor Mover, are you ready to roar? Absolutely, buddy. All right. Well, uh, it's awesome having you guys here. And uh, I, I was just telling you guys before the show, like, I'm no different than you guys. I've heard a lot of you guys talk about the same subject. I'm kind of getting, and maybe this isn't what you're supposed to say as the host of a, of a libertarian podcast. Uh, I'm kind of getting sick of libertarianism too. Uh, not the existence of it, not my belief in it, but just talking about the same things over and over. And I have so much fun listening to libertarians that I know and like and follow uh, not really talk about libertarian shit that much. So maybe we'll talk about libertarian shit. Maybe we won't. Uh, but either way, I think all of you guys have brought some semblance of joy to my life when I need a break from, I don't know, normal libertarian shit, I can open up Twitter and all you guys entertain me in one way, shape, or form. Uh, Pete, we already know your story. You've been on here before. Everyone knows Pete. We're going to save you for a minute, but uh, since you guys are both pretty new to the show, I want you to just give a little, uh, you know, a brief little introduction for the listeners here of just kind of how you got into all this weird liberty stuff and kind of take that however you want. So Ace, why don't we start with you? Sure. Yeah. Um, so it's actually funny speaking of Twitter because, um, so I, I kind of got my start in libertarianism through like, um, um, judge Andrew Napolitano, Ron Paul, those, ty those types, and then into Tom Woods. Mm -hmm. Um, but really what kind of brought me to Twitter was actually, I found, uh, Pete, I lurked Pete's Twitter account back when he was man's Raider because I found his memes so hilarious. And I just like lurked his Twitter account for years, just like collecting his memes. <laughs> and eventually I joined Twitter because I'm like, okay, these guys and the guys he hangs around with, like, you know, the fag cast now TLE, these guys are awesome. I want to be a part of it. I want to try to be a part of this crew. And that's kind of why I joined Twitter in the first place. So uh, now here I am. It's kind of surreal. So you're basically just a, a Twitter, a libertarian Twitter fanboy stalker that yes, works his way into the club. That's right. That's exactly it. That's the dream if I ever heard it. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very blessed. All right. Uh, Neo Connery Mover, who has now changed his name to Mance Gator. Uh, <laughs> do you want to give everybody a little intro to yourself? Where the hell you come from? How did you get on Liberty Twitter? And how did you become the Neo Connery Mover? Um, <laughs> yeah, I got into libertarianism through Dave Smith and Tom Woods, like debunking a Ben Shapiro video. Cause I was like into just Normie con kind of like Ben Shapiro destroys the libtards video compilation things. And uh, then I saw Tom Woods and Dave Smith do like a really good takedown video of some of Ben Shapiro's arguments. And uh, I was like, Oh, these dudes are like way smart. And just started kind of going down that path and checking out their stuff and started listening to the Tom Woods show and everything like that. And then I got into Liberty Twitter by finding a uh, friends against government podcast. And I thought bird and car were really funny. And I was like, 
man, these guys talk about Twitter a lot and I bet they're like really funny on there. <laughs> I didn't have a Twitter or even like know anyone on there. So I just made one to like follow them and like keep up with like the kind of that like scene and just started. That's how I started posting on Twitter. Basically. All right. So this is basically the fans of the FagCast uh, support group. That's, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I except, should charge those guys. Except I, w- I was in the DM when they actually came up with the name. <laughs> so Pete's the OG. <laughs> Uh, so any of you guys can comment on this, but I, I want to dive into first because people that don't get into the weeds on this stuff, or maybe they just don't have the right, I don't know, the right attitude towards Twitter. They might on the surface, look at Twitter and be like, look, Twitter's the land of the blue check marks, the land of, uh, of bands and account nuking. But why do you guys all think this is a, a really good battleground, a really, a, a place to really be known and, uh, to use it for whatever your means of communication for preferred methods may be, but why is it such a perfect format for getting a lot of your messages across in, in whatever right ways you choose to, and any guys can take that. Good. Ace. Oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah. So I Look, actually even think... as avatars, Pete could tell that you wanted to talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually think it, for one, uh, the blue checks, it is filled with blue checks. That is true, but that's a good thing because you get to watch these blue checks make ho- have horrible, horrible opinions and you get to watch people dunk on them in the comments, right? So if you're looking for some type of entertainment, you have it through that, right? There's also um, an amazing amount of people who you might not, uh, who you would regret not knowing had you not joined Twitter, right? So there's an amazing way to like uh, actually make friends on, on Twitter. And also just like, uh, personally, personally speaking, being able to quote tweet people and quote tweet them in a way that uh, hopefully takes down their argument in some way and also makes it so uh, I can make them look sort of make their arguments look sort of dumb and implode. That's really great, especially when you have people who will go in and also start making fun of them and that it's really funny. So if you're looking to be kind of a troll on Twitter, it's uh, it's the best place to troll by far. Speaking of trolling, uh, Pete, Neocon, either of you are, are pretty much experts on this topic. <laughs> I just think it's fun and funny. Like, uh, I, I think there's something genuinely satisfying about, like, throwing some bait out there and just watching people, like, bite on it. it makes me feel powerful and strong. Like, I control the universe. Is Is the real appeal for you guys for Twitter, it's not really as much, at least for me anyway, or from, as, as an observer, it's not as much about what you're saying as it is about how you're getting to people to react to what you're saying. That's right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's, I don't care if what I put up, what I post is even intelligent or funny. It's I'm waiting for the reaction and it's the best thing about, I've been going after libertarians lately. I don't care the blue check marks. I don't care about that. Well, there are a couple blue check mark libertarians I really want to get a hold of, but um, get my hands on. But I, I, I'm I'm in it for the reaction. That's all I want. Yeah. And like, what what are you going for? Like, what what is the? Is it just pure uh, joy? <laughs> is, is that is that the, really the purpose of getting these reactions, or is there like a, is there like actually a greater strategy here? Are you actually hoping to that you that this sort of by getting these visceral reactions, you're going to help other people see those reactions and kind of influence the way they view those people that are reacting. No, (laughs) (laughs) I'm overthinking it. For me, it's a little bit that like, I, I, I always think that, okay, well maybe, you know, maybe if someone sees this person making really, really bad points, maybe someone on the sidelines will see it. But mostly for me, it is actually just a troll. It is actually just, I want us to be like, watch uh i want to watch their arguments get under their own skin and watch them like freak out when they can't you know combat something i think that's really funny personally what, what are you able to get what are you guys able to get like the 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 most vitriolic reactions on what what sort of topics what sort of like what sort of memes like and you, you can go either with how you get those reactions from other blue check type libertarians or or whoever but what really stands out to you is is what really gets people fucking going being accused of not being a real libertarian. That's what I want. I want people to get upset that I'm breaking the libertarian code or libertarian um, purity. That's it's like my, that's been my thing for a while now because um, 
I just think people take this way too seriously. It's all theoretical in it really in practice. It, it, when it comes to practice, it's all theoretical. So um, I just try to have fun with it. Yeah, I think for me, the most visceral reaction I get is usually when you attack, uh, usually it's some person who is defending the cops, generally, right? I always, uh, those are the types of people I think I can always get the most reaction out of. And I know just how to poke them in such a way that'll get them uh, viscerally reacting. So that's always fun. The bootlickers are always fun. Yes. I think I saw Pete, Pete subtweeting someone today that was defending the cops that like tased that kid who was yeah. vaping. <laughs> yeah. I, I think one of the guys is something like, well, he clearly tried to vape again after they, like, <laughs> oh, well then, of course you should electrocute the child. Right, of course. What else would you do? Neocon, I want to know a little bit more about what drives you. What drives you on Twitter? What 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 causes you to make comments? Like, what what is the drive behind? Because every day, I, like, I love following Pete. I love following Ace. They they inspire me with a lot of their comments, uh, with a lot of the reactions they get. But you literally like post things that make me fall out of my chair. Like <laughs> like the other day, or maybe it was a few weeks ago. I don't care who I offend. I'm just I'm just reading someone else's tweet. But you said this is you posted like kind of as Joe Jorgensen saying, "Oh, this is a picture of myself with my retarded son Jeremy <laughs> earlier this year." <laughs> I was at work and just on my phone and like literally just started busting out so, so hard. And there's no way I could explain this to people I work with that don't even know the first thing about libertarian bullshit. But like, where do you come up with these ideas of, of things to post that are clearly just meant to either offend people that you would say a retarded son or something like that, uh, or inspire so much joy in people like me that just think it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> well, I'm definitely trying to inspire joy first and foremost, as gay as that sounds like when I post stuff, I'm not super actually gay. trying to, uh, yeah, super gay, but I'm not actually trying to like, I don't send stuff <laughs> typically thinking like, Oh man, this is going to get people so mad. Or like, I'm going to, a lot of times I'm just like, I'm trying to make people laugh. Like this is going to be funny. And I really hope everyone like laughs at this thing. Um, and a lot of ways you do that is by, you know, saying things you shouldn't say, I guess. So, like, that's why a lot of it ends up being kind of like edgelord shit sometimes. Um, but I really just want to be funny. I really just want to make people laugh. And I typically th just think of funny things all day or I try to think of things I think are funny. So it's really kind of cool that a lot of other people do, too. Like, I really appreciate you saying uh, that you think it's funny. It's cool. It makes me feel like, yeah, you know, this is actually like this is actually some good stuff here. Um and also the another way to, to like to be funny like in the libertarian space is to like make really kind of niche references to like maybe just like some inside baseball or like smaller targeted stuff because then like those people who get it you know like they like they appreciate it a little more because it's right. not just some like broad joke that on Twitter that could make anyone laugh on Twitter it's like you'd have to know who these two people are in this photo or whatever. When you know that 99% of people are going to have no clue what you're talking about, it, it makes you appreciate it so much more when like someone actually does know what you're talking about or when they actually find it funny. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, guys. What have all three of you guys had? I'm not sure if you have Ace. I know both. I know Pete and Neo Connor River have had your accounts either banned or removed like before. What can you or maybe you can think of specific tweets or specific memes. What what is it that actually can get you knocked off of Twitter or, or banned or I... temporarily banned? I got suspended for 12 hours once because I told um, Liz Cheney her dad should sit in, a, in an electric chair. So uh, that that's as much as I've gone, though. Um, I, I'm sure. Just uh, sitting Pete, in it? You didn't even say turn it on. Yeah, it yeah. On? No, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. I, I'm sure uh, Pete and Neocon Remover, though, can uh, describe uh, many more things I can get them banned. I got, tw I had 12 hours today because. Um, 12 hours? I, I didn't even know about this until. Two of you just I didn't know you get 12 hour bands and just yeah, to yeah. just to kind of like, you know, slap you on the wrist and say, hey, because because a few days ago, an obvious tranny um, accused me of being a fed and said, oh, found the fed. And I said, oh, found the tranny. And um, yeah, apparently somebody reported that three day tweet and um, yeah, that, that got a three day old tweet and that got me a ban. A 12 hour ban but um my original account getting nuked was somebody said oh what do you and then capistan what are you gonna do if um what are you gonna do if i start raping children and uh, i took the bait and i said i'll just shoot you in the fucking head and um yeah that was it that was it so yeah they don't like that one huh yeah they didn't like that one that was my account from 
like 2008 or 2009 that got nuked. Yeah. I saw another one that had some libertarians in, in an uproar recently that you, you said Pete, it was in response to the, the current situation in New Hampshire. And I think you said something to the, uh, yeah, just uh, go in their arm to take it back. Yeah. And then I think, I think I saw a certain, a certain, uh, listener who, uh, often, uh, gets upset about things people say on Twitter, uh, who may have appeared on a podcast dating a certain comedian, uh, saying something to the effect of actually he had a whole exchange with, uh, Joshua Smith somehow about you asking if Joshua Smith supports you saying this because he has, well, to, I wanna, he has to answer for you. I want to explain what I meant by that. Actually, I don't. They can go fuck themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, would you care to clarify your statement? No, I'm good. No, not really. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I, when I had my original account banned, which I actually have back now, re, like four months later, Twitter just emailed me out of nowhere and was like, hey, your account's been restored. It was very bizarre. But I don't understand why they did that. It kind of makes me suspicious. But anyway, um, I don't... I don't know the, what exactly it was banned for. Like I never got a, an actual uh, thing saying like this was the tweet or whatever, but um, it was banned by like LP loser brigade types. Uh, Cause Dave like reported Smith, by them. Yeah. It, it had to have been Dave Smith drew attention to my account in like a, in like a, I mean, he retweeted me, I think like twice or something and people found my account that way. And, uh, then some uh, like Lolbert dude, who I'm not going to name, um, took screenshots of some of my tweets from my account and posted them like a like a, a collage of them or whatever, and said, "Be careful who you retweet, Dave." And, like tag Dave Smith in it. I was like, "Careful who you yeah, retweet." And I just went through my page and like had some screenshots, and then that thread blew up, and there was like, um, like four or five different like known like infamous loser brigade type accounts who we all are very familiar with on on the timeline who were like yeah. commenting on it like wow this is crazy whatever blah 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 or dave doesn't care because he loves this stuff he's a nazi or whatever so um then the literally the day like 12 hours after that that, that happened my account spanned so i'm just assuming they just went through my page and just like searched the word like i don't know like retard or something and and just <laughs> like reported eight million tweets yeah i just reported a bunch of tweets or something i don't know and my account was banned but then I just made an alt, and then my account got unbanned. So here we are. So I saw, I think the latest account I saw you have, I know you had the Neocon Remover underscore, but now you just have regular Neocon Remover again. Is that the original account returned? The original account, yeah. I got the original one back without the underscore. So is the old one, is the second one still banned? Uh, no, no. And do they just, not catch on to this stuff? <laughs> you think they would? No, it's just on lock as a backup in case, you know. But I have been a good boy since I got banned back when that happened. I haven't gotten, like, I think a single suspension since then because I've been very cautious about how, what I tweet. And I've preemptively, since I all the counts are known, we all know who they are. Um, I just went and blocked everyone from the, the, the from the rip. I was just like, yeah, I'm not even going to engage these people. Like, I don't know if, if, you, if you pay attention to my feed, I never, like, quote tweet or interact with, like, any tweet from, like, Sarwark or, like, the, you know, I'm not going to name them, but, like, the, the people that like over the past few weeks, especially with that one meme that was posted and you know what I mean? Like that we're all freaking out. Like I don't engage with these people. They're Buzzword. all blocked. Huh? Yeah. 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 But like all the people who are engaging with that, like on that other side of Twitter, um, they're all like, I have every single one of them blocked and I don't quote tweet them. I don't comment and get in their feed and, and try to antagonize them. Like Pete does. I just ignore them all. And I've gotten no suspensions, no bans. Like I just tweet on my feed and I, that's an effective strategy to not get banned. Like the quickest way to get your shit taken down is to like, comment to somebody and like that's a like someone that's a report uh report uh person let's say <laughs> there's a term but i'm not gonna say it <laughs> oh i want to know the term what's gonna happen if you say it well it's a, like a, a term oh, used a lot is like they're a report fag oh, okay there you go <laughs> i don't want to say it what one follow-up later <laughs> <laughs> no problem it. for educational purposes that's right so while, while we're talking about Twitter, uh, I wonder if you guys can comment on uh, we just had Jeremy Kaufman actually was just on Electric Liberty Land this week to, because he was actually behind a lot of the tweets from the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. Uh, the, a lot of the controversial tweets. I think there was the, the I think the, the biggest controversial one that people are very, very upset about is where he said something to the effect of, uh, you know, objectively speaking, if a thousand trans people were murdered and their and taxation ended, the world would be a better place. Uh, and, and, and there were some other ones. But what do you what do you think? just of 
the strategy of of those tweets maybe whether you want to talk about the specific tweets themselves or just but i guess it's the idea of an official libertarian party account being sort of i don't want to use the term edgelord i think that's a, a term that just like people say because they don't feel like you know actually addressing the, the actual tweets themselves or oh, you mean like racist or racist sure you can say racist if you want yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just it is just like racist it's it's the racist of twitter it's the way to dismiss everything that you're saying because you're just saying oh they're trying to be edge lords and they're not actually and, and the, the biggest complaint i i hear from like i don't want to say blue check libertarians like I, some of them are legitimate people who <laughs> are in the liber- <laughs> legitimate people <laughs> who, who work in, in the libertarian I'm, party I'm, and- I'm laughing at neocon remover screen name right now. <laughs> i know i keep this is why you got to watch the video even though i'm talking to three avatars right now because the because pete and uh, neocon remover keep changing their screen names Right now, uh, Neocon Remover is 90s Rothbard butt gay. <laughs> and Pete is now Andy Craig's husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all in the fun, my friends. Um, I just forgot what we're talking about. I got distracted by 90s Rothbard butt Jeremy gay. Jeremy Kaufman. Jeremy. Oh, yeah. So what do you guys just think of, of this idea of, I don't know, of turning like an official state accounts into kind of like what your accounts are, like meant to draw attention, because they got more impression. They got tons of impressions. They got tons of traction. But people that work in the Libertarian Party, not all, all people, some people, I should say, will say things like, well, they're just they're smearing our hard work at being a serious party, at being a legitimate party, at being taken seriously. We can't be taken seriously with these edgy, racy tweets, even if it's getting too much attention or not too much attention, but more attention to the account and the party. And I know none of you guys probably give a shit about the party that sells, but I just, you know, feel free to comment on this however you want while I drink wine. Hey, I was at, I was at the uh, LP Florida convention this weekend, so I, I really care. <laughs> I care as long as uh, someone, if any party person wants to message me and let me write tweets for it, like that'd be great. I'll, I'd in. love to do some ghost writing <laughs> for the for the Twitter accounts. Let's just say that if they want to. Uh... <laughs> I mean, if, if, if we get the right people, if the right people get in there, this is like, I don't have any hope that the, the Libertarian Party gets, you know, taken over and then leads to some dramatic change in the world of the country. But I do have hope, potentially, that if the right people got in there, they could, at the very least, if nothing else, hand the keys over to like the three of you and a couple other people I can think of and just let let everybody go wild. Because for me, even if it's even if it does make the Libertarian Party look less legitimate or what have you. Who cares? Uh, I'm like you guys. I want to see fun. I, I want to have fun watching the world burn. And in, 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 in in you know, in a sense, at least when it comes to Twitter and when it comes to messaging, because people getting riled up about tweets. There's nothing that makes me take someone less seriously than them taking a funny, jokey, right. even controversial, or edgy tweet seriously. Yeah, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So I say, uh, <laughs> keep it going. Wow, so true, brother. Yeah. <laughs> and and right now. Ace has the best screen name of the night. <laughs> Joe Rogenson. <laughs> no, Ace. Oh, Ace. Oh, did Ace change this? Hold on. Why can't I see it? Because I put this comment up. Hold on. Ace is now. <laughs> <laughs> Very jerk off thing to do, Ace. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, this is where I think people you know, are should watching. I- should I describe? Should I describe? Should I just read it for the audio listener, since you know thousands of people are just listening on audio? Uh, or should I just say you have to go watch the video if you want to make see them it. watch the video, dude? Yeah, I think I gotta make yeah, you watch the video. Yeah, you because watch the video. we're on YouTube, but we're also on Odyssey. And if you have a choice, which you all do, go to Odyssey because we'd like to build up the Odyssey channel because fuck YouTube, but we use it for necessity right now. Uh, but speaking of Jerry Coffin, who is the founder of LBRY and and Odyssey, uh, you know. If you actually look at any of his tweets, uh, the only one, even if I was someone that didn't get jokes or didn't get the, the type of messaging that I may be offended by, if I was the kind of person to be offended by, which I'm not, is the joke, is the tweet about, you know, if a thousand trans people were murdered. But his real point was about taxation and the destruction and death that comes along with taxation. And yeah, there's like thousands and thousands of people that die every day. Uh, point being, e- even with their trans, I don't think it matters whether they're trans or whatever they are. The point being, if taxation ended worldwide, yes, that would be the world would be an objectively better place, regardless of whatever a thousand people died. That's the way I took it anyway. Right. I mean, I think some people would say, well, it's callous and cold, but it's at the end of the day, it's just a numbers game, right? It's like the, the amount of death and destruction taxation funds is innumerable, right? It's, it's objectively just more than a thousand. Yes. And it, and it really yes. sucks that when you're talking about both of those subjects, that 40% is such a you know re- relevant number. Is that a joke I don't get? <laughs> 
Not really. Yes. What's the forty percent? I don't get it. Do I? <laughs> if you have to explain it. <laughs> ah, then the joke's on me. Shit. Now I'm screeching. Sorry, um, guys. A- Ace wants to bail right now. <laughs> no, no, no. What? Oh no! Absolutely not. Maybe this is a good time for Ace to explain explain his new screen name. Oh, without naming um, names or with naming names, who cares? It's on video. Well, it, it's just uh, you know, it, it's in reference to a certain libertarian who had a certain incident with um, a teenager out a window. I'll, I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs> But I, I don't. I, I can't even like listen to what you guys say be, anymore because I can't keep up with the constant, uh, the constant <laughs> title changes. Right now, we've also got we also got here with us today Va- Valerie Sar- Valerie Sarwark's bull and Ron Paul's newsletter author. So welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm just going to ask random questions and see where. Yeah, for absolutely. Sure. That have nothing to do with anything except I, I. Who do you guys think wrote the Ron Paul newsletters? For real, the real, Jeffrey the real Tucker. one, Jeffrey Tucker. I think it's Jeffrey Tucker. Wow, yeah. that's that's three unanimous. Um, okay, what what leads you to believe that? His bow tie. <laughs> I was told. I was told by somebody that I respect more than anything. Me, I told him. <laughs> well, I do, well, Bert, you know I respect you. Really. <laughs> Maybe not as high as this person. <laughs> I, I will say I have been told that uh, also from quote unquote people I respect that are probably similar, maybe to the ones Pete heard them from. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's probably true. And if not, let's we'll just, just start saying it. it. Fuck it. Yeah. All it's right. True on the other line, I've got Jeffrey Tucker. Jeffrey, can you please address whether you wrote? <laughs> Hey, hey, hi, I certainly did. I certainly wrote them. Let me tell you, Mark, it is a fantastic piece I wrote, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> I, in, in all seriousness, I think even I think Ron Paul newsletters has also become one of those just terms that gets tossed around by I don't know, like what you might call a blue pilled check mark, whatever you type libertarian. Yeah. It's it's like edge lord, you know. It's oh, right. the, we got the same kind of people that support the Ron Paul newsletters. If you actually go and read them, I think a few years ago I read this breakdown of them by Justin Romando, basically breaking down. At, at worst, there's like four literal words in all of them combined that you could possibly construe with as having a racist undertone, maybe. But if you actually take those in context, really, there's like nothing. It's, it's really it's really nothing. It's, it's really become so much more of just one of those memes, one of those, uh, you know, grenades that gets lobbed at anybody who is associated with the Mises Caucus or calls himself a Roth, uh, Rothbardian or a Ron Paul libertarian. Uh, everyone is just smattered with with terms. And this is one of them, just Ron Paul newsletters. And then that makes us all racist. If, if you're a libertarian and you're more upset about some stupid newsletter versus um, a vice presidential candidate that worked for Raytheon, to me that just seems like you have these things just way out of but, proportion. But you can but you can care about both. But the problem is they don't care about the Raytheon. Yeah, they um, don't care about both. The Raytheon well, they, lobbyists. Yeah, they, they can care about both when they're jumping off a bridge. So <laughs> I don't care. All right. Next question. Is Tho Bishop right? Yes. Yes. I yeah. I, I think I, yeah. Cer- <laughs> certainly with his uh, certainly with like the um, uh, like shit posting edge lord stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I I mean, what do you guys think? Just politically speaking, do you think that? I mean, are you all pretty much on the page at this point? I don't know. Pete, Pete waffles back and forth. I know he was hardcore about the Mises Caucus, and then he was gone from the libertarian shit, and now he's showing up at conventions, and maybe he one day he's he's uh, criticizing the, the Mises Caucus, and another day he's kind of offering strategy tips. So I don't really know exactly where you fall, Pete, but I, I enjoy that's, watching the ride either way. What's that? Yes, exactly. That's bad design. Um, I'm but, all on board with the faux bishop plan, baby. I don't give a <laughs> fuck about the Mises Caucus, bro. Let's go. Ace, what about you? Or do you care? Uh, I so I, I try not. I just try to stay out of politics. But I do think his strategy is. Uh, I've been thinking for a while that his strategy probably is better. That you should probably try to just run as a Republican, and get elected if you're actually trying to pursue pow- political power, right? Like I, I can I can understand like wanting to be a libertarian and wanting to fix the party in the sense that the party does. If you're going to identify as a libertarian, you want to have it, you know, representing your values. But if you're actually trying to go for the political power, it would make sense to run as you know one of the standard parties and just get in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Was there a name to somewhere? DeSantis for King. <laughs> and K- Kang. 
this is why you got to watch the video, guys. Even even when I'm just talking to three avatars, the entertainment is is nonstop. Um, what else? What else could I ask you guys? I had a whole bunch of questions lined up, but I can't find them. Um, why don't you guys ask me a question? Each of you ask me a question. That, that's my new strategy. Uh, Pete, ask me something. What, what did you always wanted to know about Mark Claire? On average, how much weed do you smoke in a day? Ooh, that's a good one. On my current average, um, probably no more than a, a joint or two worth, I would say. On my lifetime average, <laughs> 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 much, much higher. Uh, yeah, my, my heyday was probably about a decade no ago. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> where I, I would roll out of bed and uh, hit the old bong, and uh, that would start my day, and then also end my day, and also be my whole day. But uh, I have advanced a little bit. I, I actually have some other activities now. Uh, I, I'm only high for about 25% of my podcast. So, you know, that that's, you know, this is one of them, by the way. So <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't obvious enough by now. Uh, Ace, what have you always wanted to know about Mark Claire? Um, I wanted to know how, uh, what is your routine for keeping such amazing hair? <laughs> Damn it. You know, <laughs> was that yours? <laughs> that was going to be my question. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm All jealous. Right, you got time, it you got time to think of a new one. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, it's my my routine's kind of wavered over the years. Okay. Uh, I've had times when I've gone through the because I I'm, I always yes this is actually something I think about. I've read like you know if you if you shampoo and uh, condition too much it can like wear your hair down and, yeah. and whatever. So then I've gone sometimes where I like just try to stop washing it for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it actually seems to get better for that. But then I just start to feel gross. You know, like my scalp feels gross. I want to just wash it and scrub it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, no, th what I do is I just, uh, pretty much like every three days I do a, a thorough shampoo and condition. Uh, sometimes I like to use, uh, shampoos with coconut stuff in them. Oh yeah. <laughs> if you really want to get in the weeds here and, uh, cause then my hair also smells good for like a day. That's nice. Cause I oh yeah, that's it. great. It's hanging by my face. Like it actually matters how it smells. Um, yeah, I mean that's it. Uh, there was a while uh, due to the, from a suggestion of a mutual friend of uh, all good libertarians, Raylene Lightheart. She told me to use apple cider vinegar, and I had like a month where I kept that in my shower and was using and just washing with that. And actually, my hair was amazing. And I don't know why I stopped. And actually, I think I'm going to go buy some after this because I should get back on it. So there you go, Bert. Have you thought of a new one? Mark Claire's hair. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Rothbard Rockwell retort. I'm liking these in Star Wars <laughs> Um, what is your favorite guest you've ever interviewed? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh man, do you want like the the standard answer or the real answer? <laughs> um, like, I, I, I want to say. Answer. I want like, to keep I, it real. Okay, I have to think about that one. Um, do the answer you better say. That's fine. Whatever. In, in all serious, not not trying to kiss ass here. Like I, one of my favorite conversations ever. Like you know, my standard answer back in the day was like, oh, when I finally got Tom Woods on, or when I got Ron Paul on, which is true. Those guys are awesome, and I was like, like really milestones for me to interview those guys to actually feel like okay, if these guys actually can have a conversation with me, and then they say good things about it after, like okay, I do actually feel like I'm doing something okay here. But um, in terms of like actually enjoying interviews, like in a in a higher level kind of way. Um, oh, a couple guys, and they're kind of related to each other because I found one through the other. But um, in the last year, I think two of my favorite interviews were one was with Pete, where we talked, we got into things like meditation and uh, LSD, and then things that I don't normally talk about publicly or normally talk about on you know that you don't even near, you really hear that much about on Libertarian podcasts. And um, also my conversations with Vin Armani, who I, I really found through listening to him on Pete's show too. I mean, talking to him has just been you know mind-blowing because again he talks about things whether you agree with them or not that are high level concepts that most libertarians aren't addressing let alone just just not agreeing with uh they're just not the conversations that are out there so i, I think in the last year i've really been trying to do more shows that i actually find interesting as opposed to just you know bringing someone on to talk about you know how a libertarian society would deal with uh this that or the other i mean i, I think one of my favorite moments of the year actually was like after i did i had jeffrey tucker on and we were talking about um, just, we were just talking about all, all sorts of shit. He was ranting about lockdowns and we just, we just had a good time. Uh, but after the interview, he, he told me, uh, you know, I, I'm just so glad you didn't do the standard, like how would a libertarian society deal with the, the pandemic? And I was like, right. I'm glad he said that. Cause five years ago, that is probably the show I would have done. <laughs> I would have just done like a hundred episodes about, you know, with Walter Block telling me how a libertarian, an anarcho capitalist society would handle this or that. And <laughs> that shit just doesn't interest me anymore. You know, yeah. now I just, I want to do shows that. 
I would actually really care about hearing. And I think that's what I've always done, because five years ago, I really cared about hearing how an anarcho-capitalist society would deal with this, that, and the other thing. But now I just find that trite, boring, and and like you guys have all kind of referenced in a way, it's just theory. And I, I used to hate when people would say that, uh -huh. like to dismiss the arguments. They say, right. well, this is just theory. It doesn't apply to the real world. And I do think the theory is apply to the real world in theory. <laughs> they apply to the real world if the real world adopted the theories, but the real world's not adopting these theories and it's probably right. never going to. So that, that's the real point. So it's not that the theories are incorrect or that I don't enjoy the theory. I mean, I know Ace, that's like the, the one of the biggest things you get into is the weeds of, of these yeah. theories. And even and, I hate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're just driven to do it now. That's point. right. That's right. Yeah. It's yeah. your mission. Yep. Yeah. Said, there are more. Child labor. There are more important. <laughs> Josh Smith's 15K travel agent. I love this. <laughs> Fit Armani Exchange. These are amazing. There are more important questions during a global pandemic than like how would a libertarian society in theory handle this? Like, um, right. what if Hitler was a gay retard or something like that? It's like a much more That's important a much question. more interesting question. Yeah. What if? Where would we be now? That's the question. It's a, you could do a whole debate with Dave on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dave Smith versus Jeffrey Tucker. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? I, I'm still trying to find this feed because I had a bunch of people in the, the our Patreon that had a bunch of uh, questions and things for you guys, but I couldn't find them. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I found it. Hell yeah. No, I didn't. That's the wrong one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, what else? What do you guys want to talk about? I'm not a good host tonight. I'm off my game. Oh, I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get the topics, but we can just talk about whatever. What's there's in no the topics. news? That's the whole point. What happened today? Well, there's this uh, LNC. How about that tweet? Can we talk about that tweet from fucking. No, hold on. I'm talking about this tweet. We got to talk about this tweet from fucking uh, your boy, fucking uh, Libertarian in Chief. <laughs> what was his? Tweet? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, someone's got to pull it up. Uh, oh, all right. you're all good. I can probably find it quickly. It's, it's a wild one. I loved your tweet today, man. Rest in peace, George H.W. Floyd. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> I fucking lost it. <laughs> Dude, some people in the comments are way funnier than me, though. Someone commented on and said, like, read my lips, no new fentanyl or something. Oh, like it's, it's, the, it's the DeSantis' authoritarian tweet? Is that the, is that the yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, that's a wild take, bro. That's the kind of libertarian autism that like I just can't deal with. Bro. Well, I, I liked I liked your quote tweet of uh, well, hold, 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 is this something that the fact of like uh, wow, I think I'm I think I like authoritarianism now. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Todd Agopian, who's who has been on this program, he tweeted, "DeSantis is becoming pretty authoritarian," and then he has a list here: school prayer slash meditation requirement. I don't know anything about that. He's he's not allowing school prayer or or making people meditate or I don't know. Transgender sports ban, transgender surgery ban, tech to platforming ban, critical race theory ban, but by all means, keep cheering him on because they are, quote, your kind of ban's requirements. Yes, exactly. Correct. He, he's got it right. That is why I'm cheering them on. Because <laughs> it's like a totally Machiavellian thing. Like, yeah, I like those things. Like, I don't care that they weren't, I, I don't know, like democratically decided and they were just top yeah. down and imposed. Like, I don't know what you wanted me to say. But, uh, you know, you know, to fall into like nothing to me. Even to fall into like the to the libertarian stereotype, those things are not necessarily uh, like antithetical to libertarianism, right? Like banning. Well, yeah, that's the, the presumption of the tweet. The presumption <laughs> right. of the tweet is those things are obviously anti-libertarian, right. and really none of them are or aren't. They're actually more just things that, well, in the ideal libertarian society, wouldn't be issues of the state at all. Right. Yeah. So to to claim that being on one side of them is authoritarian, but being on the other is not. That's just totally missing the fucking point entirely. You know, right. as, mu as much as we make fun of theory and things like that, it's really obvious when you encounter a libertarian who hasn't read any. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember, I, I bring this up all the time. I remember Jeff Dice saying, I think it was to Dave Smith last year, when you meet a libertarian who's really bad on everything, they're always bad on economics. And it's true. When you meet a libertarian who doesn't really know Austrian economics, does it? I mean, and they don't have to know everything. Maybe just read like economics in one lesson, you know, or something like that. Yeah, you don't have to it, go all human action. It's okay. Yeah. You can get, get the baby, you know, the baby lesson. Yeah, if they're not um, at least proficient a little bit in economics, economics in one lesson, um, 
Parabelin, Seen, Unseen, Unrealized, something like that. Mm -hmm. They're usually pretty blue pilled on most everything. <laughs> Definite theory reader. I'm horny, <laughs> AMA. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a good time because I actually did find uh, some thread of some uh, some questions from our patrons here. So let's see. Uh, Dan Roberts, he has a question for. I'm horny AMA. <laughs> he wants to know, Pete, are you a federal agent? Am I a federal agent? Now, <laughs> if, if I actually was, what would my answer be? Probably no. So, no. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect answer. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, are any of you guys federal agents while we're on this subject? No, nah, I don't think so. I wish I was. I'd be tight. I'd be paid for the fucking shit I'm doing. Hell yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have right. a lot more money than now. <laughs> so we talked about earlier, you guys don't think Nick Starwork is literally a federal agent. So do you just, do you just think that he is a blue pill statist who actually believes what he's saying? I guess that, that's the question of people like that, that aren't literal agents or, or anything like that. Cause there are certainly people in the party that seem to be, completely antithetical to what the, the mission or what have you should be of an actual libertarian party. So what is the motivation of those people? Is it actual sub subterfuge or subversion of some kind, or is it more innocent in, in, in a way? Not innocent. Like I, I think we can all agree, like there's shenanigans that go on behind the scene from people like that. But is there, is, is it just because their version of libertarianism is so completely blue pilledly different, or is it that they're literally on some kind of mission to, to fuck everything up? I think uh, he's like a drama club theater kid who has more status in the Libertarian Party than the Democratic Party, so that's why right. he stayed. Yes. Yeah, yeah. my kind of like cynical take on this is that I think they're trying to be uh, like big fish in a little pond. You know what I mean? So it's like I, I, like I don't – a lot of these people strike me as people who couldn't make it in the Democratic or Republican Party. So they're like, oh, I'm going to be a big star in the Libertarian Party, and that's kind of like where they come from. That's just my personal cynical take, but I don't know. Man, yeah, that, it, yeah go ahead, Pete. Yeah, I mean, it, it, th that's what I've been saying all along, and I think that that's a, what Ace said is right on, is that these are, peop these are unremarkable people. I mean, let's face it, they're unremarkable. I mean, who are the remarkable libertarians? Tom Woods, Dave Smith, the people that they hate? Come on. These are unremarkable people. These are people who couldn't, I mean, they couldn't get the amount of downloads that I get much less than the, the uh, amount of downloads that Dave and Tom get. So, of course, they're going to be, by default, hate them. And the, ra the whole racism and paleo strategy and all that bullshit, that's just excuses. They're just fucking jealous. Just that's another term that gets tossed bitches. around that no one that uses that term knows what it is, if they what use the it in a derogatory way anyway. Paleo strategy? Oh, they have no yeah. idea. It's, it's edgelord. It's, it's racist. It's, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, let's see. Hey, uh, this is a question uh, for Peter. Anybody? Uh, Andrew Dalton, not of the not formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals, I don't believe. Uh, what kind of gun should you bring into a meeting in order to take your shit back? I actually answered him privately, and I said an AK pattern rifle and five five six. But <laughs> anybody? <laughs> Uh, do either of you guys have opinions on what time, type of uh, firearm you might want to bring to get your shit back? Should, should that theoretically occur? Uh, I was trying to look up what OJ used because uh, he got caught. <laughs> so whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever that was didn't work out. I don't. I believe he just. Okay, here's a question. Do you guys? Because uh, I have. Well, it's not my own theory. It's someone else's theory that I just kind of believe in. Do you guys think that OJ Simpson is a? the killer of Nicole Brown and uh, whatever that dude's name is, or an accomplice. Ron Goldman. To have Goldman. some respect. Ron Goldman. I'm sorry. I apologize. Mr. Goldman. I'm Three gone. parentheses. Oh <laughs> 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 Ooh, I heart tranny grannies just says three parentheses. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ron Goldman what do you guys think? I want to know what you guys think about OJ. Uh, he's a great actor. <laughs> oh. I love the Naked Gun films. <laughs> Big fan. Oscar for those, right? Uh, I don't know. As Nordberg, he might have won an Oscar. 
Uh, Jonah Perrin wants to know, will Ace ever stop debating scrubs on Twitter? Uh, when I get banned. Then it's over for you? Just, it's going to be one ban? You're not going to you know, work your oh, way no, back from no, the Oh, no, no. I'll come back. Yeah. But I'll stop for a little bit when I get banned. <laughs> We should just try to get a spam by reporting his tweets. That's right. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that would be really funny. <laughs> well, this is a question I, I think I can answer it too, because I like, believe it or not, as as much into like political stuff, because I host a theoretically political podcast, I don't really follow day to day politics, like hardly at all. All of my political actual news I get from hearing Brian McWilliams rant every week on Electric Liberty Land. I don't read news. I don't know what's going on in the news until libertarians or other people I follow start talking about it for whatever reason. But Jim McGill asks, is it possible to enjoy the shit show without paying any attention to the political world? And I would say absolutely yes, because all I do is I bring on mm -hmm. people I want to talk to. I do shows I want to talk about. You know, I do shows about subjects I want to talk about. And then I go on Twitter and watch the shit show. I don't watch the news. I don't read news stories. I don't do any of that shit. Yeah. And never. Uh, so I would say absolutely yes, because that's exactly yeah. what I do. I don't think I've read like an article in like three years. I think I just read headlines. And I, I just get, get my news online. from my shit posting mutuals talking about it. That's how I get my news stories usually. Yeah, yep. I get all my news from Paz. Yeah. <laughs> Scarlet Threat Society is my news source as well. Uh, and you know, I, I don't know if any of you guys were super into like, I, I, I'm probably aging myself. Well, well, Pete will know, but, um, like, uh, Art Bell that I, I used oh, yeah. to listen to that, that growing up. Um, but I, how, how deep are you guys into like the weird conspiracy stuff? Not, not I like the it. kind of conspiracies we talk about, but I mean like the real shit I'm talking about, like the interdimensional beings and the aliens and the, everything in between. Oh yeah. I love it. Yeah. Big fan. And does any of this relate to what's currently going on in the Libertarian Party? That's really my question. Is there a satanic, world, otherworldly, interdimensional influence going on? Yeah, Archie Fire is a this cryptid. All <laughs> what is that? Archie Fire is a cryptid. <laughs> Which one is he? No, Rose he's his own. Oh, he's his own. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's like a I'm not even going to read Pete's current name. This one you do got to go to the video for. The Art Bell Curve from Neocon River. That's a good oh, one. Oh, man. That's that is good. a great one. That's legendary. I wonder if it's and, ever been tweeted. Let's see. And Archie's flower. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, I, I grew up listening to, like, I was so fascinated by, this is why I, I love what Paz is doing so much, because it really does remind me of that, that like, Art Bell style, like, uh, just, just telling people mm -hmm. stories. Like, and just, uh, like, it just sends me down this, this world of imagination where you hear so much crazy shit, and I'm sure a lot of it is just bullshit. It's just people writing in and making stuff up. But, there's always that like, man, did someone really go through this? Did they really drive through Nebraska and go to another dimension and see this fucking weird dark tower and then come back and couldn't explain it? Like hearing weird stories like <laughs> that's, that. That's funny. That's uh, that's my co-host Khan. That's his story. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that was yeah, that's that, his. who wrote that one? Yeah, that was Khan. Yep. Oh, wow. I had no yeah. idea. No, I mean, that, that's a yeah, that's a specific story that was right on, on Scarlet Threat Society over on Timeline Earth, who really should be sponsoring this episode because it's basically been all about them. I also, Paz wanted me to tell you that he is actively working on a, a Scar Threat Society special for you. Good, because I spent I sent him Bitcoin just for that reason. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn more about the moon and why it may or may not be a hologram. That's all I'm saying, guys. That's a really interesting theory, actually. <laughs> yeah, six million miles away. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know either, man. Six million? Are you serious? Is that, or is that the sun? It's, That's the sun. it's five million nine hundred ninety nine 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 nine. I, I thought it was five point nine six. Damn! Isn't that pie? Oh, damn! Damn! <laughs> Shit! We could go, try to go to the gas planet. <laughs> Do they have wood doors there? <laughs> yeah, the spaceship, the shuttle definitely will for sure to take them there. Six million. Everyone get aboard! Get aboard the Elon Musk space shuttle! <laughs> get loaded onto the space cars. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just posted six million sounds a little high. <laughs> Joe Kubinski was Joe Kubinski was listening to this as he's walking his dog and he just shit in front of a cop and he, his dog just shit in front of a cop and he's so happy. It doesn't say his dog did that. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I don't know. I'm not sure if he happened to be walking his dog, took a shit in front of the cop, or it's exactly not clear. I'm gonna imagine that it was Joe himself that took that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Be a much better story. Yeah, way better story. Uh, no, but let's get back to a serious note for a minute. Do you guys think that 
man literally land on the moon or not? And is I the moon don't. real part B? Hmm. I don't know enough to say if the moon's real, but I don't know if I believe the moon landing. That seems pretty. Uh, okay. uh, I, I'm yeah, going to take answer, a- by the way. Joe said he'll just answer yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a controversial take on this. I do think we landed on the moon, but I think all the video footage is fake. Ooh, I like that one. Okay. So what's the motive there? If they really, do you think they landed on a different, on a completely different timeline and just made this video footage separately? And they've, yeah, also I think the, there? I think the video footage was separate. Yeah. The video footage is made by Kubrick. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. That's, that's confirmed. What I've heard. Yeah. That's confirmed by who? Me. Just okay. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have voices in my head that just told me so. So it's confirmed. Joe Bishop Henchman's grill. <laughs> <laughs> and racist Nick Ashley. Oh, this is great. This is great stuff. But the the one thing you have to ask about the um about the whole moon landing thing is you know, that phone call that that um Nixon took on a landline, right? Yeah. From space. Yeah. How did how did that work? Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good one. That's almost as unbelievable as the phone calls from the planes on nine eleven. But I don't want to get controversial here. <laughs> hey. Um, you know, our buddy, our good friend um, Ryan Dawson says that it was totally 100% possible. The phone calls, yeah. I've heard yeah. him say that. That was disappointing to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to be fake. There, uh, the, the great thing about Ryan is people either love him and love his takes and want to, and you know think he's great because he's an edge lord and he's controversial and then there are other he's people a fed who's covering yeah, yeah <laughs> there's other yeah other people think he's a fed and everything like that is, is because oh he doesn't he doesn't believe there were explosives in the towers and everything like that so well we may as well just pivot right to there while we're, while we're talking about everything weird and fun yeah weird and fun weird and fun 911 um, that's right yeah <laughs> what do you guys think what's the real what's the real story it's obviously not the one we're told. I think everyone agrees. On yeah, that. it's not what we're told. I, 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 yeah, the phone calls are weird to me. I, I, if other people say they're, you know, they're possible, like Ryan did, I'm inclined to believe that. But uh, one thing that's always been weird to me is that they found the passport. You know what I mean? The, yeah. the, weirdest the passport is always the one that weirds me out the most. It's like, oh, they just found this passport laying on the laying on the ground. Well, wonderful. <laughs> isn't that isn't that a coincidence? And, and that and the uh, the BBC reading of the falling of Building Seven before it happened. Yes, that, yes. that's the other one. It's like, okay, yeah. no, yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just stumbled upon this video about a bunch of Israelis dancing. So um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be over here. <laughs> That's a comment from Dancing Israeli, Ryan, Ryan Dawson's and, and also, didn't, remember the Pentagon lost, what was it, like uh, tr- almost a trillion dollars or like uh, a large sum of money? 2.3 2. 2. 3 3 trillion. 2.3 trillion. Didn't Donald, uh, Donald Rumsfeld have a press conference where he was like, oh, yeah, we lost 2.3 trillion dollars. Anyway, tune in tomorrow. And then the plane hit the very building or the very spot in the building where they, that was supposed to have uh, happened or whatever. I, yeah. It's, yeah, and it's all the just, Jews didn't go to work that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember going to work that day. So what's yeah. that? Day? Yeah, but that wasn't because of that. No, no, no. That's because um, I was unemployed in high. It's nothing to do. Um, what, what's your favorite conspiracies out there? While while we're getting weird and wild here, well, I, oh. I want to know each one of you can name your favorite favorite weird conspiracy, and then maybe fa- maybe conspiracy that you think is the most true. It's a two part question, Pete. Pizza. Yeah, oh. oh, Pete's going first. No, what was yours? Okay, go, no, no, go because I'm I'm still trying. Pizza to Pizza cryptid. One. Well, I know I said Pizza Gate. Oh, okay. Pete <laughs> Pete the Gate is gonna be my new name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. That's definitely the most interesting one, I think. I mean, not I mean, not I guess on a grander scale, but just for the time that I got into all this shit, that was like some wild red pill shit. Is that your favorite or the one you most think is true, or both? Both. <laughs> it's it's certainly the one we have the most evidence for, especially with the whole Epstein thing being exposed like years later. My well, my favorite part about people that dismiss that one is they say, "Well, the emails don't. It doesn't say that. They just say they could be talking about like." Then you're like, "Okay, well, then explain what they're talking about because they're saying words completely out of context of when those yeah. words would ever make sense." Like, like oh, I found uh, a, nap- a napkin that looks like a napkin map. spaghetti map. Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like, don't forget the walnut sauce. I love right. the walnut sauce with my 
young pizza or some so, fucking so shit. So maybe it's not pedophilia, but it is something that's not the things they're saying. So I like my pizza without hair on it. Like I like I like my pizza without hair on it. It's like what? <laughs> I I, th- I think honestly, Pizzagate like might have been the moment that I I started to turn away from just caring so much about the philosophy and everything because i started to realize like oh this shit is like real like all these things that i've been listening to for all these years about i'm not saying literal satanism but i'm not not saying that either uh Mm -hmm. but like like actual forces of evil being behind a lot of things and the realization that there are people that could actually be talking, like having these kind of communications that clearly there's something there. And maybe there's an explanation. That's not we're raping and killing children. There might be, I don't know. I like, I like to hope that I like to hope that there's not a bunch of like raped and, and, and missing children, but there are missing children. There's like a shit ton of missing children every year that are, that are completely unexplained and never, never found. So and their names are also the names of Wayfair cabinets online. Yes. Yeah. That, that is the craziest thing ever. That Wayfair thing. Let's see. Facebook user. Guys, when you want to comment on the StreamYard, you got to do a weird thing and register with StreamYard so we can see your names. But Facebook user, is the elite pedophile th- a thing simply to set people up for blackmail or do they actually like to fuck kids? Well, geez, I don't know. Why not both? Yeah, yeah why not both? <laughs> why can't it be both? What uh, about a service called yes. blackmail and everything arrives three days late? <laughs> <laughs> Snail blackmail. Well, I think the um, the weirdest conspiracy theory I've heard is, and I follow this page on Facebook just because it is fascinating, is that the rocks on the planet were alive at one point, and that you can see like their hand, like these ma- like full mountain ranges, or like the face of one person, and like if you turn it sideways, it shows clearly that there's a face, and that they believe that these rocks were actually these mountains were actually people at one point and that they existed on this planet. I, it's not often I can say that that is a conspiracy that I've never heard before. Oh, and it's, it, it's a fascinating page. And it, I know what I'm doing for the rest of It's called Horning day. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, go ahead, Pete. Sorry. And the, I would say the one conspiracy theory that I don't know that most people consider this a conspiracy theory, but is the Boston Marathon bombing. There's something really, really wrong with that whole, with that whole thing. I mean, it is so fucked. It, I mean, every I don't even believe this. Sorry, I don't know if the Sarnayevs did it. And if they did it, I think it was under it was under orders because one of the the older one was married to like some blue blood family and everything like that. And he had like CIA contacts. There. It's like, come on. What? It just drives me crazy that no one asked. I saw somebody the other day with a Boston strong shirt on and I wanted to go up to him and fucking smack him and start explaining to him, you know, ugh, fuck. It's like, you believe this was real? You stupid fuck. I mean, it's probably Chris Kyle got murdered over this thing because his whole his fucking team was on the ground there it's fucking nuts man um but are you against it though are you against the boston marathon bomb you didn't condemn no it. i mean <laughs> I, hate, I fucking hate boston Pete, so, are you yeah, on the record yeah i want specifically. you will you sign a pledge saying you're against the boston marathon bombing no see, no I, c- I thought it was a good thing <laughs> oh see i i re- i revere the boston marathon bombing as repugnant and irrational Oh. So, <laughs> as do all libertarians uh, around the I, world. Signed, Nicholas stunning Thoreau. and brave. If I can name a conspiracy, two conspiracy theories, one that is like one of my favorites, and one that I think like actually happened. The one I think actually happened is that Ted Kaczynski was induced, was caught up in MK Ultra. That's the one that okay. I like. I think that's really, even a conspiracy. I think theory. that's confirmed. Yeah, it's is confirmed. that confirmed? It's okay. confirmed that he was sure. like part of I'm the experiment. Confirming it now. Okay. Yeah, Neil okay. Yeah. has officially confirmed. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad my conspiracy theory was just confirmed right now on the show. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, that is one I, I definitely believe. Uh, one of my favorites is actually, do you know the theory, the uh, conspiracy the theory? Sandy about, Hook, yeah, we got it. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the conspiracy theory about the uh, black hexagon on Saturn. Uh, yes. Do you know about that one? Well, I don't know what the, I mean, I know that the black hexagon on Saturn is a thing, but. Okay, yeah, it. it's es- essentially that's um, supposed to be where like the ultra terrestrials essentially inhabit or like it's a, it's a portal to uh, some considered like a portal to hell. Because if you go on YouTube and you look, Google uh, like radio uh, frequency sounds of Saturn, it sounds like, like screaming, pe- people screaming. If you like, if you just Google sounds of Saturn, 
and you'll get like these radio frequencies of people screaming. And then there's just this, this real, there's also these um, black cubes all around um, um, America and the world that are supposed to be like these um, Mecca, these, like communications to Saturn. Yeah. yeah. Mecca, yeah. Yes. Yeah. They're supposed to like be radio transmitters in some sense to Saturn. It's, it's wild. It's a wild theory. So is the theory that those black cubes around the world, some of which are worshipped by like major religions, are uh-huh. literal, literal connections to physical hell that is on this gaseous planet? Yes, that is that is the theory, pretty much. Yes, I like that. I like yeah. That All right. What else, guys? What's on your mind? I've almost finished this bottle of wine. Hell yeah! There's that. Let's go, King Tuesday. <laughs> um, I got nothing. I got nothing. I'm totally, I'm totally blank right now. Uh, I'm gonna pass the baton. Neo Connor Robert, you mover. You're the host of Lions of Liberty for one day. Who, who do you interview hey, and why? Uh, hey, Mark, are you ready to roar? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, oh. to know that was coming. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Lions of Liberty. This is Neo Connor. We were hosting, and we got a great show for you today. It's a debate. Between Brianna Coyle and Dave Smith. <laughs> There's a 40% chance one of those isn't making through it. <laughs> Man, someday I'm going to figure out this 40% joke. <laughs> Might be today. Might not. <laughs> I missed a big joke somewhere along the way, and it's the one thing I don't get on this yeah. whole show. And now I don't even want it to be explained to me, because that's not even fun. Right. <laughs> So it's better if I just never know. All right, guys, I, I want to wrap this thing up by uh, asking each of you to give a 30 second speech, a 30 second spiel. I want to give two speeches, actually. I want you to give one speech why someone should follow you on Twitter and should follow your every move. One other speech, another 30 seconds, why they should not, not ever look at anything you do say or write. Oh, that's uh, great. Pete, you can go first. Do it in any order you want. Say it again. Uh, one one thirty second speech or so. I'm, uh, I'm starting at high now too. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is why your video is off. Yeah, that, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Why people uh, should follow you? Why sh- people should not follow you? Okay. Why should people follow me? Um, if you are somebody who likes to see people just absolutely lose their shit, or if you like to see somebody who just really doesn't give a fuck, um, follow me. Um, why shouldn't you follow me? I, ugh, I, don't I don't know. Maybe because you're a good person. You know, that's probably the best reason to not follow me. Because good people should do good people things. <laughs> All right, Ace, double speeches. All right, yeah, yeah. So uh, if you enjoy watching constant debates on your timeline and uh, in quote tweet threads that are longer than the Eiffel Tower that you'll have to click through in, um, forever uh, to get to the start, you should probably follow me. Um, and that now, I'll give a longer reason why you should not follow me. <laughs> um, you should not follow me if you care about your mental health and uh, all that is good and decent in the world. And um, if you just do not want to experience any type of suffering in your life, you should probably just steer clear of my timeline. All right. Fair enough. Neo Connor mover. Later. Um, you should follow me because uh, I think I post pretty funny stuff. And, uh, you know, I think you'll get get a kick out of some of the goofs and gaffes we have over on my page. It's real. Frankly, we have some of the best people, folks, and it's a real great time. And uh, we do a little trolling. It's called We Do a Little Trolling. And it's just a good old time. And the reason you shouldn't follow me is because if you follow Pete and Ace, they'll retweet everything I tweet anyway. So there you go. You'll get it all. <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. All right. I want you guys to each wrap up, just since these handles change all the time. Uh, just let everybody know your current Twitter handle, the best one they should follow right now. And one last request. I want you to tweet something verbally as you sign off. Whatever you want. Put a tweet, make a tweet, but instead of tweeting it, you're going to say it. Okay. Ace, I'm going to make you go first because I know you're Uh, in the spot. The tweet? 
Yeah, or whatever order you want. You can you can you can buy yourself some time by giving your Twitter handle. Okay, well, well, you can follow me at Ace underscore Arcist on Twitter, and then check out my podcast Slurp Gang if you don't want like something political. But for the tweet, I'll just tweet uh, Free Ross. All right, simple, effective, effectable. Pete, um, Twitter at Peter R Quinones, and um, my tweet would be something like. Oh God! I don't, I don't even know. Uh, Jeez, talk about put someone on the fucking spot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Don't worry, I'll edit this out Come so back. whatever you said was sounded like you did it right now, except for the video. I'm not gonna edit that. So oh, uh, okay. So well, <laughs> I, I'm gonna borrow what a comment that somebody made in the Lions of Liberty Pride for this. Six million seems a little high. <laughs> <laughs> that works on way too many levels for me to handle right now. All right. Neocon. It's always changing. Uh, follow me at Neocon Remover. That's it on Twitter. Uh, and go to JoeBidenGaySex.com to pick up some cool shirts. <laughs> it's a real website, I promise. <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> it's real. It's not a joke. It's actually real. I'm actually just confirming this live for the audience at home. Yep. Oh wow, that really just re that redirects neoconremover.com. Amazing. <laughs> and uh, a tweet to send right now. Um, the only reason Richie Castaldo is interested in shifting the Overton window is so he can get caught jerking off in front of it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is an appropriate way to wrap things up, guys. All right. Well, as uh, as our patron Jim McGill just said, best lines Liberty Live of all time. Hope you all agree. Uh, we'll see how much at the end of the show we all remember. Anyway, gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a blast. And uh, look forward to uh, Ace is going to be back, actually, in a few weeks. Right. Debating Brad Palumbo. Dude, I'm so stoked for that. The oh, I am geez. really stoked for that. About the topic of whether I think it started from the conversation about whether it's okay to slap politicians, but we're gonna broaden that to the the, the broader idea yeah. about uh, whether it's okay to be violent, basically in politics. So yeah. we'll find out. It's gonna be very sick. I'm ex extremely excited. Yes, yeah. we all are. All right. Oh wait, as hey, if yeah. if, if, if yeah. I'm a, a Lions of Liberty Patreon member, can I comment live on the show, like on the video, and have it pop up like this? Yeah, uh, yeah. When we do stream yards, you can. <laughs> is it going to be StreamYard? This one is, yeah. No, no, the fucking. Oh, 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 that one, Brad? Um, yeah, I'll do. Yeah, I'll do StreamYard. Just, so, just Ooh. specifically so you can comment. Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm going to be lighting motherfuckers up. I'm going to write. I control, I control which tweets we, see, which comments we see, but don't worry. That's either. fine. I'm going to yeah. be good, but That's I'm going to write yeah. many jokes about Brad Palumbo that I want to pop up on the screen. <laughs> All right. Well, if for no other reason, this is the number one reason to join the Lions of Liberty Pride. So you can live see Neil Connery Movers comments to Brad Plumbo while he debates Ace about the use of violence and maybe about tanks. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, it's been a blast. I had a good Thanks time. Thanks so much, Mark. And I'm going to continue this evening with maybe another bottle. I don't know. We'll see. It's Thanks been an awesome lot, time, Mark. guys. All right. Peace out. Thanks. Take Thanks, buddy. Live long and live free.